very pleased that we now have three manufacturers of smooth, small wind turbines, which have um, good products on the market. And uh, we come with the first speaker now to one aspect, which is related to the certification aspect. Um, and that is the cost of small wind. Of course, we all know that, uh, let's say 20 years ago, small wind was um, kind of or 10 years ago, still competitive in, in terms of um, generation cost per kilowatt hour with small PV, with PV. Uh, PV is now, has become much cheaper. So cost is an issue and people who want to install a small wind turbine, they're certainly interested in how much is the cost per kilowatt hour um, from the electricity that I generate from my small wind turbine. Now I have the pleasure in particular to welcome um, Mike Berge. Berge, I think well known as one of the most well known manufacturers of small wind turbines from the United States. And Mike, you're going to speak about your company's efforts in, in particular addressing also the question of the cost of electricity produced from small wind. Mike, may I invite you to give your presentation? Thank you, uh, Stefan. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, my, um, my thanks to uh, the World Wind Energy Association for putting together this webinar, and my special thanks for not starting at 9 o'clock a.m. in Bonn, um, which would be <laughs> 2 o'clock uh, for us. And sometimes I'm up that late, but generally I'm not uh, sober So uh, at that time. So my uh, thanks for the good good planning now zoom is a little tricky uh, as Sven um, and I w um, let's see so I'm sharing and then well, I have to go here so good. And, perfect well but I don't have let's see so now are you seeing full screen yes very good okay excellent and um, so I'm Mike Berge, I'm president and CEO of, of Berge Wind Power Company. Um, we are about 40 years old. Um, we used to make turbines from one to 15 kilowatts, but um, we now just make 10 and 15 kilowatt turbines. We have a little over 10,000 installations covering all 50 US states and, and about 100 countries around the world. Um, we had focused from the very beginning, thanks to my father's background in aircraft design, small air, air, airplanes, uh, on simplicity of design and therefore trying to achieve low maintenance uh, and long life. And we have had some degree of success on that in that we can show that we have some turbines that have run for over 20 years with 100% availability and zero operations and maintenance cost. We've all noticed over the last 10 years that um, uh, the markets have been difficult. Uh, for 30 years, we had a cost advantage over solar, but starting uh, in, in the, uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago now, uh, we've had some, some real challenges there. Uh, and so this graph, which only goes through 2014, but does show the basic problem. Um, so, uh, Starting in about uh, uh, 2008, the Chinese government uh, put over $40 billion in soft loans into Chinese solar uh, module factories. Those factories overproduced the market at the time, and so they dumped it even below their cost for a number of years. The result was a, a very rapid decline in solar costs, which of course is great for the world, great for the environment, great for the solar business, not so good for the small wind uh, business because people generally, um, at least in the small turbine area, um, connected to the grid, which is our primary market, uh, are either choosing solar or wind, um, not both. So at the small scale size, we've seen the problem of declining costs and we've lost our competitive advantage. Um, and specifically for Berge Wind Power, with, we had a best-selling 10 kilowatt turbine, about 3,000 units uh, in the field. And you, you can see at, on this uh, levelized cost of energy chart from Lazard, 
which is sort of the, the main metric on your competitiveness against other technologies, that our 10 kilowatt was more expensive than solar. And because solar is easier to install, less regulations and is applicable to more sites, this gave us and uh, all of our uh, colleagues around the world with small wind products uh, a, a very serious business threat. Uh, and we recognized that and felt we had to do something about it. So starting about um, uh, 2012, we started looking at how we could lower the cost of our best-selling 10 kilowatt. And we evaluated all sorts of changes with bigger rotors and changes well, just a number of changes. And what we decided was we just could not produce enough improvement to compete with solar. And that forced us to abandon the basic architecture we've been using for over three decades um, and to find another way to make uh, small wind more cost effective. The path we chose um, was similar to what the large wind turbine companies have done, which is figure out the aerodynamics to put a larger rotor on the same nacelle and tower and foundations so that you drive up annual energy output without driving up the cost of installation or capex. So that's, that's what we did. Um, the next generation Berge turbines are very different from um, our old design. And here you can see our 10 kilowatt and you can see our new 15 kilowatt uh, turbines uh, side by side in a, in a rendering. The, the new turbine um, has, is stall regulated, does not furl, has a 9.6 meter rotor diameter. Uh, we have custom airfoils and custom blade plan form. The blades themselves are made from carbon fiber. Um, it's a variable speed turbine up to the stall point, And then we use a combination of inverter power and dump load um, to to control the rotor speed, and the rotor has superior tall stall characteristics over uh, other other rotors, other airfoils that have been produced for for small turbines. So uh, just two moving parts: the yaw and the um, and the rotor. Um, the blades bolt directly to the alternator, and the alternator's inside out, so the outside spin. So that's just one moving part for the rotor and, and the generator. Uh, we've designed for no maintenance, um, a five-year inspection interval, and a 30 to 75-year operational life. We have turbines that have been operating for 35 years, so we feel we, we um, have a reasonable hope of getting that long life. And the other, for connection to the grid, we're using an advanced silicon carbide, higher uh, frequency switching uh, inverter, uh, with an eight kilowatt dump load. The inverter rating is 25 kilowatts. To, to help lower costs, um, we have developed lower cost non-concrete foundations. Uh, we strongly believe in tall towers. Uh, our typical tower height is 37 meters, um, but, um, but we're trying to standardize now on self-supporting lattice towers at 30 meters using helical anchors. These are essentially big screws that uh, go uh, about uh, six meters into the ground and uh, can, be, uh, can, can take the very high loads uh, that you see um, during uh, storm conditions. And we've done quite a bit of verification work um, at our site with uh, uh, about two years of data gathering uh, on the um, accelerations and deflections and stress levels uh, of the foundation. The turbine, the 15 kilowatt turbine is a significant improvement over our 10 kilowatt and I think over the economics of, of most of our competitive uh, small turbines around the world. Um, it's, a, it's a bigger rotor, um, but it doesn't put higher loads onto the tower. So we can put um, uh, the same, the same uh, we we'll put this turbine on the same tower and foundations that we've been using for the, for the 10 kilowatt. Um, the reference power is up from 8.9 to 15.6 kilowatts. The C sub P, the, the peak efficiency, is up 33% to a, a shade over 40%. Uh, it's a slower rotor, so it's quieter. Uh, the, but the biggest impact is the annual energy output rating uh, is up 
140%. So it's over double what the 10 kilowatt pr would produce, but the costs are only up 18%. Uh, and so, uh, and then that's with a concrete, or that's for the turbine. If we, when we add in the helical anchors compared to concrete foundations, we're actually down 17% in lower installation costs than our 10 kilowatt. And the result is that the levelized cost of energy is down 64% from 21.4 cents per kilowatt hour to 7.8 cents per kilowatt hour. And these are using the, the common uh, calculation methods that you see in the LCOE charts. Um, and so the result is that we are now um, lower cost, once again, uh, compared to solar for you know, an average to good um, residential uh, and farm wind site. And so, and it's enough of an advantage that um, our customers are willing to go to the extra trouble to get the permits to install the taller towers, as uh, uh, Sven uh, mentioned uh, um, in his presentation. So the tall towers are important. Uh, and, you know, basically the story here is that you know, after 35 years of success in the small wind business, we faced extinction uh, due to uh, the ch trying to compete with the Chinese government uh, and using uh, advanced design tools and our experience from those uh, many years in the small wind business, we've been able to engineer a solution uh, that gives us a competitive advantage once again. So uh, we're proud of that. Uh, we are currently finalizing certification of the turbine uh, to the uh, American standard, uh, both for the turbine and for the electronics. Uh, and we are looking at some, some uh, foreign countries uh, where we'll also be certifying. We're conducting the uh, uh, blade static and fatigue tests. We're doing life cycle fatigue testing uh, in cooperation with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. We currently have about 15 turbines in operation and uh, some of them have demonstrated capacity factors over 24 hours above 100%. And the highest winds we've seen are in the 30, low 30 meters per second, so 70, 80 miles an hour. Um, so, so far um, it, it's done, uh, done well and we, we um, you know, we'll keep, we'll, we'll only install them in the U.S. for another year or so uh, and make sure we've got all the bugs worked out before we start uh, um, shipping them overseas. Now the, the turbine um, is, is bigger and produces a fair amount of energy compared to uh, many U.S. homes many U.S. homes are heated with fuel um, and those who are not connected to natural gas pipelines are using propane or fuel oil, which is, are both expensive. And we see a bright future for the 15 kilowatt to help those people get off of fuel heat uh, and onto uh, clean uh, heat uh, using wind power. It's called uh, decarbonizing or beneficial electrification. And so uh, we see a, a, a good, and solar of course doesn't work so well in the winter in many places. So between uh, transitioning to clean heat and electric vehicles, we think that the, the demand for electricity for homes and farms is going to go up and the turbine sizing will be uh, more suitable for that. We also see uh, real opportunities um, because of declining costs of storage and the advances in power electronics and um, the uh, internet of things technologies to provide new services to utilities that hopefully we think will flip the script and make the utilities supportive of uh, customers installing uh, small wind systems. Um, and we think customers are very much interested in reliability. And so if we put together microgrid systems, which are very similar to what we've been doing for decades in village electrification and remote telecom sites. Uh, so we have a lot of experience in this area. Um, if we provide um, power surety during power outages and the outages are increasing due to climate change and other, other factors, uh, that this is will provide a strong market pull uh, because we can provide services um, 
that that uh, otherwise are not available. And and this allows us also to compete very well with community solar or or large wind farms because we're, you know, those systems don't help during power outages. The the source of electricity, the renewable, has to be at the customer site in order to provide that resiliency. So uh, we see that that's going to be a market driver. So we're working uh, now on um, home microgrid systems um, with um, uh, inverters that can both work in connection to the grid and work off-grid um, and with recycled or second life uh, electric vehicle batteries. So we're working with Nissan North America and remanufacturers, recyclers of batteries and finding we can, we can get about 15 years of additional life out of a battery that's been pulled out of a car because the range has been decreased by 70%, by 30%. And so we see it, that all that coming together allows the possibility of cost effective microgrid systems that can both provide power to the customer during outages for extended periods and provide uh, firm uh, on peak peak shaving for the utility in a virtual utility distributed uh, generation uh, mixture. Um, so we are working with some utilities uh, and developing uh, this. We'll have some uh, uh, test uh, systems in the field later this year, early next year, and uh, hopefully a commercial product in uh, late 2021. So uh, with that, I, I wanna thank you for the opportunity uh, to, to speak with you today. And again, my thanks for holding this uh, in the afternoon rather than uh, the early morning. Thank you. So well, thank you very much, Mark. That was excellent. And indeed, we were thinking of you and also other friends from uh, North America. We're shifting always a little bit. Sometimes we start earlier, sometimes later. So that uh, it's, I know it's not always fair to this time, our friends from in particular Peter, Australia, but this time you didn't have to get up that early. This was a very encouraging uh, indeed presentation and uh, the, the cost level that you mentioned that sounds really like a game changer. Uh, and we are in a, in a range almost of uh, large wind turbines. So I'm looking forward, very much forward to hearing the, um, nice success stories of uh, American farmers who use your home microgrids. That is indeed something I think that looks, or sounds very promising.